Okay, from today we are going to learn the topic 7, control. This is the last topic in higher level. The first day is 7.1.1 uh, and we will discuss a range of the control systems. From our guidebook, the syllabus, you can see the variety of control systems should be examined such as the auto, uh, automatic doors, heating systems, tax meters, elevators, washing machines, process control, device driver, and a lot. So for each one, you should know how does it work. For the technique, uh, knowledge of the specific system is not expected, but uh, you should be able to analyze it's a special, uh, specific uh, system. Maybe it's not only here, and but other places you can find the control systems because we are not sure which control system that will be in our final IB exam, right? Okay, let's get started from this short video clip first. I hope the internet connection is good. Today. Okay, it's good. have an amazing capacity to organize and control the things around them. Most of our daily activities, from personal hygiene, to eating, to transport, to entertainment, use a systematic approach. What we want to happen and what does happen, including the process in between, broadly defines a control system. In brief, a control system is a system consisting of a set of subsystems combine together to generate the desired output with the desired performance. So a control system is a system that controls the behavior of other systems. And, and by systems, of course, the definition could be quite wide. It could range from your bodily system to something obvious that we, every day, we would encounter, such as an aeroplane or a car, or in fact, anything um, from a very advanced electronic equipment to very mundane things that you see every day. Look in the mirror and you'll see a very advanced control system, which is capable of monitoring and regulating complex operations and processes. Well, we could start with your body as a system by itself. Uh, there are lots of complex systems in the body, uh, ranging from something very primitive as just regulating chemical composition in your blood to actual servoing system where you control your hand to reach for a particular object. Okay, as the uh, Lego on the table, you can see that's the actually the another kind of the control system. And if we have time, we can do some programming on the robot to make some control, control like uh, uh, to separate the Lego with the different colors, something like that. Okay. So let's from the first one, control system washing machine. So washing machine, normally we use washing machine every, I'm not sure about you, but for me, I use the washing machine every week, like a weekend, I will, my job is my responsibility to wash all the uh, clothes, okay. Uh, we will, so after we fill in the time with clothes, and we can choose the different program for the for the washing machine, right? We choose the level of the waters, and we choose the powders level, and we choose the uh, how many minutes for the like a spin, and and uh, anything else. So right, and after the press the starts, the machine fill the time with water, and then. And stairs with the clothes around using an um, agitator. So after sometimes uh, agitating, the washer dries the water and then spins the clothes to uh, remove most uh, most of water. Right? Then it refills and uh, agitators the clothes some more to rinsing out uh, out the soap 
and the interference and the spins again, right? It depends on the how many times that you program, maybe three times, three, three times or three minutes. This is basically what the washing machine does, but how it actually works, it's different, depends on the different uh, the program, depends on the uh, manufacturing, different brand, right? And inside the switch, inside the switch is um, a motor, um, motor equipment with a gear reduction that makes the control uh, dial turn very slowly. And in the top half of the switch, there's a, uh, normally there is a set of the six contacts. The, these are, um, how to say that they are actuated, uh, actuated by the small piece of the metal in the plastic arm on the drill. And after like the spin spins, the bumps on the dial rise and lower the six metal pieces, which close and open the contacts uh, in the top half of the switch. So this bumpy plastic disc is really the software program that run your washing machine. The length of the bumper determines how long each part of the cycle lasts. And the length of the space between the bumps determines how long the machine pulls, uh, pulses before moving on to its uh, next task. So this switch controls the speed of the motor and determine which of the hot, maybe cold water supply will open during the wash and the cycles. If hot is selected, only the hot water value maybe will open when the machine fills. If the warm is selected, both will open. If, uh, and if the cold water is selected, only the cold water uh, will open. So the level of sense use the uh, pressure switch to detect the water level in the tank. So which controls how high, uh, how high the tank fills in the with water with water. So after water resides air, it uh, is compressed, uh, causing an increase in pressure and uh, affecting the sensor. So that's uh, normally the washing machine does. And for another control, so, uh, uh, control system like an automatic door. So from this picture, you can see the uh, we have the sensors, right? We have sensor. Normally, the sensor is um, often infrared, and the sensor uh, and sends out the infrared signal, which then the bounced off the of object, and these signals can also be microwaves. The sensor then receive the single, single uh, and the signal and then send a signal to the processing unit uh, which then the processes the information and send it to the automator automator so in the form of the two uh, motors that cause the door to open for a brief moment and then close it and ever later uh, Elevators. Uh, elevator control system consists of button on the floors of buildings, right? And uh, within the uh, uh, elevator, a um, motor to move the elevator up and down, and the uh, motor rise the doors, and a computer to control everything. So it's how how does it work? We can see that. Um, a person, a person will first press a, a floor but button to call an elevator. The computer will receive this and send the best suited elevator to that floor. This is determined by not only the position of the elevators, but also the direction of the elevators currently in use. The computer can see where the elevator Cap is in like a shift as the cap has a magnetic sensor on its side, each side, and the red is a series of holes in a long magnetic tape along the shift. The computer will send the cap to the floor with the motors that control the movement of the 
elevators. The motor will control the movement of the elevator cab with uh, suspension suspensions uh, cables. When the elevator reaches the floor, the door will only open when the cab reaches the, the a certain point. It's read by the magnetic sensor. The cab door will also have the timer to ensure it does not stay open uh, without uh, passenger pressing the close door button. The passenger will then press the button of the which floor he or she wishes to go. This is a request that is sent to the computer. The computer will then the process to uh, activate the motor holding the air uh, elevator the cap to the passenger de uh, desert the floor. So when the elevator is uh, appro um, appro approach approaching approaching the floor, the computer tells the motors to slow down and uh, unit to slow down and then the, until a full stop at the, that floor. So when the floor is uh, so when the floor is reached the door will open. Okay, that's the elevator. Uh, elevator. The traffic lights. We can see traffic light all the time when we like go to the school or go home. And the traffic light always at the cross on the road and the traffic lights use like, underground they use the underground uh, electronic wire to induce an elect electromagnetic field which will detect any uh, presence of metal okay the pedestrian the crossing uh, often use the traffic light to ensure the safety for both the drivers and the Pedestrians. The pedestrians push the button, which send uh, uh, signals uh, signals to the microprocessor. Uh, they send wait for the, an appropriate time to trigger the signal to change with the use of the other uh, sensors. Uh, normally, if, uh, if you, I know you, uh, if you. Go to the U.S. You can see that normally the at the cross the traffic light you can you have the button on the uh, you can press that button and it, to control the traffic light. But not in the Thailand it's always uh, controlled automatically, not by the people who want to cross the road, also, right? And the last one I will. Uh, if we talk about this the GPS, a global positioning, uh, uh, positioning system. Okay. If you know you are uh, 10 miles from a satellite, one in the sky, and you could be any, uh, anywhere on the surface of a huge uh, imaginary sphere with uh, 10,200 kilometer radar. Right. If you also know you are uh, 1,000, uh, 1, for example, 1,000 kilometers from a satellite two, uh, you can overlap the first sphere with the another, so it's a larger sphere. So the spheres interact in a perfect circle. If you know the distance to the third uh, satellite, you get a third sphere which inter, uh, intersect with the circle all two positions. So the Earth itself can act uh, as a like, fourth uh, sphere, so only one of the two possible position uh, point will actually be on the surface of the plane. So you can uh, eliminate, um, eliminate the one in the space. So receives the general look to the four or more uh, satellites, however, to improve the, the accuracy of, uh, and the provide the precise uh, attitude information.